Hello and welcome to another video. You may never have solved an integral that looks like this because often you don't get them. And the day you find them, it's going to throw you off because all the techniques you know do not work. Okay, um, this is already trig. So no trig substitution is going to save you. No U substitution is going to save you. No integration by parts or partial fraction decomposition. Nothing saves you except something I call T substitution. Okay, um, I learned this a long time ago that whenever you have a linear combination of a trig function like sine or cosine, maybe in the bottom you have 2 minus 3 sine x or 2 plus 4 cosine x or 1 minus sine x plus cosine x. As long as all of them are linear, they're not raised to a power, this substitution always works. You could try it. Just make up a function and see what, what happens. And on top, it's a rational function. On top is a constant, not another function. Okay, not sine, not cosine on top. Just you have 1 over this. What should you do? You should do the t substitution, and what should your t be? It should be the tangent of half x of x. So you say let t be equal to the tangent of x over 2. Now this might look like a more complicated thing. Yes, but that's the only way. Okay, so how is tangent related to sine? Well, whenever we have something like this, it's always smart to sketch our triangle okay so let's sketch our right triangle what does it say it says that the tangent of x over 2 so the angle is x over 2 and the tangent of this angle is t tangent is opposite over adjacent so it's going to be what's the opposite um, it's going to be t over 1 so we can quickly use pythagorean um, identity uh, pythagorean rule to find what this is going to be, it's going to be t squared plus 1, the square root of it. And basically, that's all you need. That's the most important thing you need. From here, we can find sine x over 2. We can find cosine x over 2. We can find sine x. We can find cosine x. Because once you know both of those, you can find anything else. And that's why it's useful. So, after now, all we do is just algebra. We just want to be able to prepare ourselves for what's coming. Now, look at this. Well, since our, our integration is with respect to x and we're already doing a, substitu a t substitution, we have to try to find what do you think dt is. dt is going to be the derivative of this, which is secant squared x over 2 multiplied by 1 over 2, the derivative of the inside dx. And what does that give us? This gives us half. Oh, we can multiply both sides by 2, so we can have 2 dt, we can say 2 dt equals secant squared x over 2 dx. Okay, now all I'm trying to isolate is dx, I just need my dx, but I cannot move this x to go join dt, I can combine them, so is there a way I can write secant squared x over 2 in terms of just t? Yes, there's a way, and what's the way? Just run to the triangle and tell me what secant is, okay? So you see, it's still a lot of cleaning up we're doing. Let's clean this up. Um, so at least we know this, okay? Let's try to clean it up. Um, from the triangle, from the triangle, we can say that secant x over 2 is equal to secant is hypotenuse over adjacent, which is going to be this divided by 1, which is going to be the square root of t squared plus 1. Therefore, secant squared x over 2 is going to be equal to the square of this, which is t squared plus 1. And we're done. So now we know what secant squared. So we can go back here and say, okay, let's find just dx. So we can say, therefore, 2 dt is equal to t squared plus 1 dx. And we can bring this down here and have our dx here so that we have 2 over t squared plus 1 dt is equal to dx. So now I can get rid of this dx and write this in terms of t. Uh, but 
I still have sine x here. It means I have to go back to this triangle and find what sine x is. But I don't have sine x. I don't have an angle x called x. I have x over 2. Well, let's keep working. Okay, so here we have the first major ingredient, which is this one. Okay, the second one is to find sine x, but let's find sine x over 2 first. So we're going to find sine x over 2 will be equal to opposite over hypotenuse. So it's going to be t over the square root of t squared plus 1. But that does not help us. Is there a way to write sine in terms of tangent? Um, well, we don't have that. What if, what about, oh, we're not looking for sine x over 2, we're looking for sine x, right? So, um, let's find cosine x over 2 quickly. What is cosine x over 2 from the triangle also? The cosine of this is going to be adjacent over hypotenuse, which is going to be 1 over square root of t squared plus 1. So right now I have this and I have this, but I'm looking for sine x. What about if we write sine x this way, sine x over 2 plus x over 2. Do you remember this trig identity? Sine x over 2, sine a plus b will be equal to sine a cos b plus cos a sine b. So it's going to be sine a. Let me just write that quickly. Sine x over 2, cosine x over 2, plus cosine x over 2, sine x over 2. Okay, you notice that if we do, what you have here is exactly what you have here. So, but I'm just going to write it out so you can see it. I'll clean it up so you see the process. Now, after you've done this one or two times, you know what your answer is going to look like eventually. So you don't have to show all of this work if it is required at some point. Okay, so if we add these, if we multiply these two together, what do we have? We have t over um, the square root of t squared plus 1 multiplied by cosine, which is 1 over square root of t squared plus 1, plus, this is going to repeat, it's the same thing because it's cosine, so we're just going to have two of this because what we have here is what we have here, okay, so I'm just going to say equals two of this, equals two times what we have here, because adding it again is the same thing because it's cosine and, okay, um, which is the formula, remember that cosine 2a is equal to 2 sine a cos a. Okay, now you see it. So what, what do we get? Eventually here we're going to get 2t over, if you multiply these two, what do you get? You get just t squared plus 1. Now, every time you make this substitution, this is going to be your sine x. Every time you make this substitution, that's going to be your sine x. And if you were looking for cosine x, it's going to be 1 minus t squared over t squared plus 1. Again, when we, when you can practice that. Just change this to cosine and try to find cosine x using that double angle identity for cosine. And you find out that that's what you get. So basically, I have found my sine x in terms of t, cosine x in terms of t. Now I'm coming back to the question that we had originally. I don't have time to clean all of this up, so I'm going to bring this here and say what we have here can now be written as the integral of 1 over, okay, let's put a line over this. It's going to be 1 over 1 plus, what is sine x again? This is sine x. It's going to be 2t over t squared plus 1. And what's dx? dx is 2 over t squared plus 1 dt. So this is going to be 2 over t squared plus 1 dt. Now watch what this becomes. You see this t squared will cancel this t squared. And what you have will be the integral of 2 over, see if this cancels this. What do you have left? 
Well, this is going to multiply this, so there's a multiplication. Let's put this here. So t squared plus 1 will multiply this. You're going to get t squared plus 1. And then t squared plus 1 will multiply this. It cancels this out. You have just 2t plus 2t dt. Oh, this is easy, right? Let's pull the 2 to the back. And this is going to be 2 times the integral of 1 over... What does this look like? t squared plus 2t plus 1 is a perfect square. It's t plus 1 squared. Will you always get this? The answer is yes. You will always get this. Okay, so if you're given this, you can always integrate this because now you can make your u, you can do u substitution now. So let's stop here. Okay, so let's say we're almost at the end. So let u be equal to t plus 1 so that du equals dt. If du is equal to dt, then it means we can go back here and say this expression is now 2 times the integral of 1 over u squared. I can replace dt with du, which is now equal to 2 times the integral of u to the negative 2 du. And we know what this integral is. Uh, this is going to be negative 2 over u plus c. Ha, 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 ha. That's it. Now, what is u? We just have to do replace the u until we get back to our x. That's all we need to do. So here, let's go back here. So final stages of this calculation. What is u? We said u was um, t plus 1. So this is equal to negative 2 over t plus 1 plus c. And what did we say t was again from the beginning? 10x over 2. So this answer is equal to negative 2 over 10x over 2 plus 1 plus c. Now, do you want to leave your answer in terms of 10x over 2? That's your business. There are many trig identities that can transform this into whatever you want. You can write 10x over 2 as sine x over 2 over cosine x over 2. Then you distribute, then you flip the cosine x. It stays on top. You can change it to sine x over sine x over cosine x. Whatever you want to do, that's your business. But right now, remember the t substitution. Every time you have a linear combination of sine x and cosine x and a number in the denominator. Try it for yourself and see what you get. I'll see you in the next video. Never stop learning, because those who stop learning have stopped living. Bye-bye.